Welcome to our online midweek worship. We're glad that you are here. For this series, we have invited Pastor Paul Bowman to paint and reflect on the scripture. And so I hope that you will enjoy this special Advent midweek worship. Thanks for joining us. The voice of one crying in the wilderness says, Prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to prepare the way for the coming of your Son. Give us courage and faith to proclaim in word and deed the good news of your coming. Even as we wait in patience for that day when Christ will come again. Amen.
The prophet Isaiah, long before the time of John the Baptist, declared, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. The future was unknown, yet God gave the prophet this word, which was a vision of the future for the people to hear. No one could or would envision what it would look like or how it would be. No one expected Jesus as the Son of God to be the Messiah, or at least not their Messiah. The people of Jerusalem and Judea were tired. They were warned, sick and tired of being sick and tired, we might say, willing to do anything to get out of the life, the trap that they were in. And word got out that there was this man out in the wilderness, someone maybe like Elijah, this man who would later become known as John the Baptist, who was out along the Jordan River, about 30 miles or so from Jerusalem. So they went to hear. There they saw and heard this one, John, who was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, he ate locusts and wild honey, and he preached. His preaching was loud. It was rough, aggressive. His audience could feel the intensity as his words pierced their hearts and their lives. He would nearly knock them down with his words, and then he would turn and wash them, would baptize them. This is just what John did. He would denounce the people of their false confidence. They came out to John, confessing their sins, and then entering into what they thought was this symbolic act of washing, so that one could go into the water and come up and out as a better version of themselves, or maybe to initiate the coming of the Messiah, or so the people thought. But then, John takes a turn in his own preaching and gives a word of proclamation, declaring that the promise of God would be fulfilled in someone other than himself as he recognized his own limits. I baptize you with water, but one is coming who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel of Luke, we hear John say, I baptize you with water, but one is coming who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. 
Well, what is this? A baptism of the Holy Spirit and a baptism of fire? When we look ahead to the book of Acts, we see that the disciples will be sent back to Jerusalem to wait to receive the Holy Spirit. And as the Holy Spirit descends upon them, it will descend as tongues of fire. But we know about a baptism of fire. You know about this. In life, we hear people say, I just can't take this anymore. I can't go on. Or this can't be upon receiving some news. It's not as I had planned. I mean, I had worked so hard for this. I had this all laid out and now this is before me. It is the Lord who takes us forward through such events. Rather than giving us up to our own willpower to endure it on our own, instead the Lord takes hold of our hand, our fingers, that grip so tightly and peels back this grip from that which we hold on to. Those things that will destroy and kill, though we are convinced that they are our lifeline. And the Lord detaches us from ourself and attaches us to Himself. Through the hard events of every day, that dying with Him we can live with Him, so a new self can be raised. This is Christ at work in you through the Holy Spirit. God would become as close to us as our own flesh and blood. And John was proclaiming his arrival, the Son of God, for you, you, not left alone in the dark, not left alone waiting without hope, but rather with peace, a peace that passes all understanding. It is this Lord Jesus who comes to you, stands before you with something new, something actually new. Not more things to do to get better and hopefully be good enough for God, nothing like that. Those are simply more messages of the world. And they are old. It's the same old, same old that comes packaged maybe in a new container like a wolf in sheep's clothing. But here now is something that is actually new, a new word that's given to you by your Lord Christ himself. The Lord says to you, I know you, and I call you by your name. I forgive you. I love you. You are mine. This is my peace that I am giving to you.
Paul only gave us much to think and reflect on in his Advent message through word, song, and music. What stood out for you? What will you be watching and praying for this Advent season? What fills you with wonder? I again invite you to join Vicar Kristen and me for a Zoom worship on Wednesday nights at 7 as we reflect and pray together. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. I will be using the 1977 contemporary version, but please join in whatever version and in whatever language that you choose to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Even as we wait, watch, and wonder, God is with us.